How you going guys and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm back on the 31. Um, got a few bits and pieces that I want to continue to make for it. So one of the things I always wanted to do was put a what's link set up in the back. So factory in a 31, they come with these pan hard rods. Um, and because they're a single fixed length, it will always push the diff on an arc. So you can just imagine oh, these are like, say they're a meter center to center. So have like a meter radius and your wheel will, will sort of travel in that meter. And the problem with the cars being so low is that once the bar comes up to horizontal, they're actually pushed over to one side, probably like 15 mil. Um, and with uh, tight offset wheels on the guards, it's very hard to not have the guards rub because you've got to flare one side more than the other. And if you tried flaring guards in a sedan, you know they're pretty hard. So what I always wanted to do was put a Watts link in the car. What a Watts link will do is it because it has a center pivot and two arms that when the when the car comes up and down, this will pivot and the diff will stay centered in the car, so you won't have that problem of rubbing uh, the tire on one side of the guards. So I've been starting to build one. So this is one that I've started to build. So it's off the factory diff hat. And I've laser cut all these plates and welded them on and made my own cam and stuff. But then if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen all my stories. But um, someone mentioned that you'd use a Falcon because they're BW78 as well. So this is a E-Series Falcon one. So it's a EL one actually. And from what I can tell, it looks like it's going to go on. So we'll give it a whirl. And then it comes with the two short arms and this factory cam. So this... There's actually, this is actually pressed sheet metal with a rubber bush inside of it and a crush tube. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's flared on the edges to give it strength, but it's a, it's pretty light and pretty thin. But Ford wouldn't have done something silly for a reason. So this is, we'll use this. We'll throw it into the car and see what we have to modify to get it to work in an R31. So you've got the cover in the car now, bolts to the back of the Nissan Diff. So the first thing to notice about the Ford cover that the, the cam has to be on the passenger side it it's uh, not symmetrical so you can't swap it on sides uh, but that's fine and then the second thing is that the Nissan bolts are very short uh, the Nissan cover is like a pressed sheet metal cover and this is a cast aluminium so it's probably like a solid six mil thick here with another five mil boss so the the bolts do start but I'll have to replace them with a much longer bolt probably at least another 10 mil on them just so it's nice nice and strong but for the purpose of getting everything mocked up today and whatever um, it'll be fine another thing to notice is that on this cam it's got some low profile bolt heads and some big nuts so you'll have to have that orientated so that the low profile bolt heads are on the cover side so they can swivel past the cover just it's probably like three mil in there but if you had the nut on it which would be something like that you wouldn't be able to get it silver past uh, ideally you want it to be in the car i reckon pretty much up or down or like 15 degrees over uh, at full bump just so you can get it to wind back on full droop and you have that big range of movement to allow the car to go up and down uninterrupted uh, without this binding but that's fine uh, so on first thought, I think we'll jack the car up, put it in its right height position, and then we'll suss out what we're going to do with these arms. I think we might be lucky, we might be able to cut down the Ford arms and weld them back together and run them in the Nissan as well. Now that we've got the car in its right height position, you can probably see that the top of my trailer arm brackets are above the chassis rail. And they're probably like 15mm from the bump stop to the front of the diff. So that's going to make it quite difficult to run these arms I think this is this is definitely going to have to move that won't be able to run over the diff anymore I think it'll have to run under the diff or finish out the diff but uh, it's probably a small price to pay to put a what's link in this car um, yeah so initial thoughts are I think we'll run from the factory pan hard rod mount to the bottom and have it over probably like 10 degrees and then from the top we'll We'll weld them out on the chassis rail once we get rid of this exhaust and we'll do that 
and we'll tack it all in and see how it goes. Looks like we might have got lucky too with the body mount because we can put an M12 bolt in the in the body mount for the pan hard rod and we can put a M12 bolt in the in the arm for the what's link. It just looks like we'll have to make some spaces or something for this. Uh, it's definitely a bit thinner but it might help us align it because I noticed that the diff's a bit further forward so it might help us to space one side and then we can align it uh, so the arm's not really on a massive angle and it won't really wear the bush out really fast but we'll, we'll measure now from this pin to this hole and we'll cut down one of the arms and weld it back together so we can fit it Right, so we got the driver's side arm cut down and welded back in. And yeah, it is on an angle. It's pretty tight on the front, but it's not too bad. So we'll have to machine a spacer for that. And then we'll just we've got the exhaust out now, so we can see how much space we've got to work with. But I'll aim to try and keep it the bolt on the inside of the chassis, but we'll weld to two sides of the chassis. Uh, for the bracket um, I'll measure that up now and we'll cut that arm down and then we can work on drawing some of these brackets so I've got them um, cut up and I'm about to weld them but just a little trick um, so what I've done is I've tried to put the join in the middle of the arms that way I'm not putting heat through the bushes and upsetting the bushes but then make sure you clean them up really good and put a, a bevel in them you'll need the hollow tube, so I've tried to bevel three quarters of the tube diameter just to make sure I get penetration. And then the easiest way to make sure that the arm's straight again is to put them into something with a fold. Like ideally you'd want to use angle iron or something, but uh, I don't have any angle iron stock kicking about at the moment. So I've just got this uh, um, HR31 diff mount that I've stuffed up, but that's enough to Put it so I can pull it up tight into the fold and it's straightening the, the arm for me and then I'm just going to put three tacks on it and then straighten it and then fully weld it. The straighter it is probably the better it is and that it's not going to try and bend out later in the future. Uh, you know if it's got a kink in it it'll potentially create a weak spot there so just uh, be careful when you weld them. I'm TIG welding in them but you could probably MIG them or whatever but just because uh, just, I was just TIG welding this morning, so I was just TIG weld these as well.
simple as that. So I've got the passenger side arm in. And I've just tightened the bolts up really tight so I can get it to stay here. Otherwise I'd probably have to zip tight or something. But now what we'll have to do is we'll have to work out uh, a bracket to come off the side and around here. And weld on here, probably weld the compensating plate. So fold the plate that goes across here and up the side and weld that to the chassis and then, then fill it weld the two plates to that. At the moment I think I'm only going to do it in 3mm. Um, everything else is 3mm so I don't think there's going to be much side load in it. It's just got to locate it enough but I might weld some washers on it just to double it up around the bolt just to stop it elongating the 3mm but I'll get some cardboard and I'll do a bit of cardboard aided design and then we'll go cut it out of steel and so it turns out I have a lot of uh, 2 mil, but not a lot of 3 mil. so these are the old um, AC block offs that I used to do uh, when I plasma cutted them myself I uh, do them in 3 mil. but now that I get a laser cut I do them in 2 so we'll just destroy one of these up just to get the two plates uh, actually we might need to destroy two and then we'll probably do the compensating plate in five because I've got some five more kicking around um, unfortunately that's all I've still I've got here so I guess that'll just have to do so it'll be right I reckon bracket wise this is what we're looking at so found another piece of 3 mil that I folded 90 degrees so I'm going to use that as a compensating plate and then I cut these out with the grinder out of those AC block offs and then drill the 12 mil hole in it so just using this set screw with a whole ram of nuts to hold it all in place so I can keep it spread when I weld it because when I weld the inside it's going to want to shrink so with the nuts on the inside I'll hold it all the way until I can cool it down or it cools down naturally but what we'll do is we'll TIG weld all this outside of the car. I've rechecked it fits and I went in with my verniers and measured it at 35 and a half so I'm just setting it at 36 so it'll pull in a smidge when we bolt it in the car and then we'll grind off a bit of the chassis rail and then we'll weld this whole setup into my chassis rail. So welding the bracket outside the car was that really handy because it would have been an absolute pain in the ass to weld it inside the car but I've got um, the passenger side arm bolted in the bracket at the moment. You can see it's side plates and it's compensating plate. Well, I couldn't weld all the way through here, but that'll be fine. Um, ground the chassis. So I got all the primer and all the dirt off it on, on the back side as well. We've just got it all assembled so we can see that it all works. Um, and then what we'll do is that we'll drop the diff. And as we drop the diff, you'll can watch the cam turn. There it is, unloading, and then what we'll do is unbolt this arm while the diff's down, will give us a lot more space to weld it all out, so we'll just get in there, probably end up spotting it just because it's on an overhead or in a, in a vertical face, so probably just spot it uh, and try not to make too many sparks because we're like right next to the fuel tank. So the welding went on right. Uh, did actually burn myself but I kind of was expecting that uh, yeah if you got a hoist it's much better than doing it on a uh, axle stands and lying on your garage floor I can tell you that much but it's uh not turn out too bad it's all welded up the top so it's all welded up both sides and around the top so that's all good bolted it back in just to make sure anything's wrong with it or anything so it's still gonna do its job but yeah no it's come up really good pretty happy with it yeah, I just got to get these bolts like we talked about earlier and then might pull it all off and give it a clean up and paint it all up and uh, Bob's your uncle, she's away. So yeah, if you want to do it yourself, you can probably, I think AUs have them as well, solid axle AUs, but this is an EF EL1 um, and then as long as you get all the parts and you can cut and weld and then, I don't know, if, if you want a bracket or anything, just, I don't know, if you can't do it yourself, send us an email or something and I'll get them cut for you and then you guys can do it yourself so it's probably the cheapest way I've heard 
about people doing them before, but I never tried it myself until today, so it's actually worked out pretty good. But yeah, so we'll give it a jack and then see how she works with the cam and everything. Okay, so going down, this is what it'll look like. Going up. All in all, it keeps the diff in the center, and then it works uh, similar to a pan hard rod but different. Where, like we discussed earlier, the pan hard rod pushes the diff to one side, but the Watts Link keeps it separate. So, yeah, thanks for watching. If you like what you've seen, don't forget to subscribe. Got a few more weird things going on with my R31 soon, so be interesting for a few guys to see it.